Williamson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Luken has certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable. That incident we had off the line in race two, uh, that was towards the tail end of the field, and it was when they were all bunched up going into the first left-hander. They made the right, but then it all funnels in to that tight left at the top. And it really, really is tight. And there's no room there. If you're on the inside, we saw what happened. They were trapped against the fence. They were, and you're absolutely right. Pinched I mean, in, you know? Yeah. So we've got Marvin van Lukener on to the right-hand side of the gate. Kuhn Hermans, Glenn Janssen's up next. Then the third from the right, will be Etienne Bats and Nicholas Moussa looking to make it 75 from 75. There is Julian Velbin and local rider Andre Chermak. He has received a fantastic reception from the fans around this circuit. And I have to say, looking out of the commentary box, we've got crowds of three or four deep in places. Daniel Willemsen, Rodolf Le Breton, two six places. And I have to say, and I said it in commentary, given the state of the competition and the way these guys are going, I know he'd want to win every time, he'd be in there mixing it, but those are two good results. Lucas Czerny along there with Bastien Chopin, uh, the Czech driver, a good result for him in the opening race. And I thought he was one of those mixed up in that melee, uh, and he was not, in fact. When we saw the replay, he was clear ahead of that. Number nine, Davy Sanders, Luke Rostang, another French passenger. 33, the Stegmans. My hat goes off to Peter Stegmans at his relatively advanced state of life in terms of sidecar motocross. It certainly is his final one. There, the 14, Koiben and uh, Kuban. Justin Kuban and Dion Reitman. Well, there. that's Jake Brown and Joe Miller, the British pairing. <laughs> what can you say? That if they didn't have bad luck, no luck what would they all. have? <laughs> no luck at all. Heinzer and Shelbert. Again, these two left-hand sidecars position up alongside each other. Tim Lefrink and Costas Pileskas, they were involved in that incident, but a thumbs up from uh, the Lithuanian Costas Pileskas. And I do have to say, I do like their crash helmet design. It looks like there's a, a bit of a tribute to Nicky Hayden there. But, uh, with the 69 on top. But Tim Lefrink and Costas Pileskas will line up alongside Sven Visselink and Kenny Van Garlen. Dutch driver, Dutch passenger. And of course, they will be heading to their home GP. Now, we just saw him there tread on the front forks of that machine. Now, we touched on this yesterday, Barry. <laughs> I don't think he's got a specific name, but basically, I was speaking to well, Casper Stupilis yesterday. You preload the suspension, don't you? You preload the suspension to almost full compression and then lock it in with a pin. So there's no wheeling, or limited wheeling at least, as they uh, drop the clutch and fire away from the gate. So, uh, well, that solves one problem. There's no wheeling, but the next problem is how do you get it to uh, compress fully and work normally? But uh, the answer to that question is as soon as the bottom, the suspension bottoms out completely, it releases the pin and then ta-da, you have forks that work as normal. First bump or under braking and uh, the trigger is released. It's a bit like a ratchet on a tractor foot brake. You won't understand that. that you know, <laughs> there's a little dog that locks it in and keeps the brake on. First hit of the brake and off it comes. Well, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> well, <laughs> we do know that Ian Cox and Paul Horton won't be uh, out there in the third and final race here because uh, Paul Horton, he, he spoke to me about five minutes ago. In fact, we both spoke to him and he said to me, uh, well, in his boot, he uh, I think he was changing position and then all of, an, all of a sudden he felt a, a in his foot and that was that. Here we go then, 15 second board and uh, into the sunshine here, a cloudless sky and they will be heading straight into the sun, just feathering the throttle. Plops it in gear. Watch the gate. We're into five seconds. The revs rise. Feathering the clutch. I know what it's like. And away they go. The gate is down. The second row leaps over the gate as well. Charging up on the inside is Willemsen again gets the whole shot from Lucas Cherney. Lucas Cherney there in third. Daniel Willemsen, he is amazing out of the gate. Can he make it count this time? Julian Veldman's up in the second place. Julian Veldman and Andre Cherney. Oh, they're up in the third place, sorry. But they're still ahead of Etienne Bax and more importantly, Marvin van Lukener. Bax in fourth. Daniel Willemsen, the 10 times champion leads, his young passenger, they'll have had words about the technique. Julian Feldman, Andre Chermak in third place ahead of Etienne Bax and Nicola Mousset. This time Bax will be looking at the inside, but already these guys are now chasing the arch master 
and down he goes. He's got three full lengths. Daniel Willemsen has really got his act together. Kuhn Hermans has now, and I said it at the end of the last race, Kuhn Hermans in that position has got the chance of the win here. He certainly has. If he and gets away, backs won't be on him. No, you're absolutely right. And no, it's all very closely contested for third place as they go into that left-hander. But Daniel Willemsen, the 10-time world champion, he leads the way ahead of Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssen's fantastic stuff then from the man who won his first title in 1999. Rodolf Leverton, his passenger, oh, a little bit of a spin of the wheel there on the exit. Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssen try to capitalise, but Etienne Bax and Nicholas Mousset, they're coming alongside Julian Velpen and Andre Chermak for third place. They won't win that battle going. He'll go for the inside, though. I tell you, Bax will go for the inside at the right-hander that they're coming up to now. And has he done that? Yes, he has. Bax has gone for the inside. I told you he would. He likes that line. Now, here we go. Still, though, in third place, it's Veldman. Veldman and Chermak backs again on the inside line. Really, really trying to pull this one off. He'd love to do three in a row. But Julian Veldman, Andre Chermak, got a fight on their hands here. And he backs up the inside He's of got Julian Veldman. He's oh, got yeah. it. Bax has got it. Bax has got it. I don't think he has. Julian Veldman still there defending that third place. Etienne backs in fourth place with Marvin van Luken and Robbie backs there in fifth. It's so, so closely contested at the end of this first lap with Lucas Gioni and Bastian Chopin rounding out the top six. Etienne Bax got the worst of that deal, in actual fact. Now he's dropped back a little bit. Feldman on the Mega, the ultra-quick Mega, the CPD chassis, down over the hill. It's Hermans, and still Willemsen doing a great job here, leading on lap two. This is sensational stuff. He is a legend. He's been around for a long, long time, and he's showing these young guns how to do it. Daniel Willemsen and Rodolf Leverton lead the way. Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssen, so much pace and experience for Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssen just need to put it together now, but as you say at the end of race two, Barry, well, <laughs> they can get away with the leader. They have a massive chance of the win, and here they are. Can they make that happen? I think Hermans will eventually wear Willemsen down. Frantic first two laps. Veldman wide into that berm. There goes Bax, and Van Lukener coming next. Van Lukener is there behind backs he's got to stay in touch the red plate holders got to stay in touch kuhn hermans ahead of him daniel willemson rode off le breton in the sunshine here at kremlin just sensational i mean i get so excited why wouldn't you if you're watching this for the first time get your act together and get along to a meeting if you're watching it on live stream yeah we do it all the time here in europe it's the best sport in the world He's certainly right there, but Daniel Willemsen and Rodolf Lebreton leads the way. The old war horse is showing them how it's done. Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssen's in second place, but it's still so, so close. Oh, slight mistake there, was it, from Union Feldman as they exit that difficult left-hander. Etienne Bax and Nicholas Mousset ready to pounce when the opportunity arises. Bax behind Feldman. It's settled down. That first frantic charge has settled down. We're looking at the race leader still, Daniel Willemsen. Rodolf Le Breton looking good here. And look how, how close you want it. We've got five of them over the line. It's a 15 wheeler. Feldman then behind Hermans, and he's getting away. Back ripped off tear off there. Julian Feldman so fast on that top bend. And now, who's going to have the bravery on that downhill drop? They're coming around to it now. Well, Julian Feldman, he's not scared of a hard move. He'll be showing that in the Kurt Varick and Larry Kunas move in the earlier race. There he is at the inside of Kern Hermans and Glenn Janssen's over that tabletop jump before the plunge down into that difficult left-hander, but they're almost side-by-side. Side. Julian Veldman carries more speed. They're side-by-side side once again, but Julian Veldman and the <laughs> Andre Chermak slot into second place. Daniel Willemsen and Rodolf Leverton are next in their firing line. This is sensational. Look at Veldman. Feldman down on the back of Willemsen. He's going to be leading this race before long. Herman's fighting back. Bax is going into the deep stuff. He knows he's got a real scrap this time around. Daniel Willemsen, I take my hat off to you, sir. You are doing well. You've got all the youth of this top-level sport climbing all over your back wheel, and you're showing them the way around. Well, whatever conversation he was having with Rodolf in the earlier race, that has proved absolutely vital because they are leading the way and doing a fantastic job of defending that lead. It might have been something as simple as don't over passenger, don't overdo it. If you throw yourself out too much, I haven't got the grip. Let me ride the bike, you just keep us upright. It might be that simple. It could well be, but uh, whatever it was, <laughs> it's clearly proved valuable because they're still there leading the way. Union Veldman and Andre Chermak, Etienne Bax and Nicholas Mousset now open to third place. <laughs> this is so, so close, you can't call it. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed to see Hermans dropping back. I thought he would, in this position, get by and clear off. But 
but Daniel Willemsen has not given him the opportunity to do that. Veldman has got a fight on his hands now with Etienne Bax, twice a race winner here at Kremlin. Here they go then, charging round the left-hander, the mega squirting out up to the left they go, round that wonderful banking, and then away over the drop. It's nice and flat. The, the quads have actually done a good job here. They've ironed out a lot of the ripples. Some of the stones are coming through, and there's a, just a bit of dust starting. The start-finish straight was watered. We went out on that and had a look. Bax is not as quick as Julian Feldman around the twisty stuff. No, you're absolutely right, and especially in this section, Julian Feldman and Andre Chermak are perhaps the quickest of all the crews out there on the circuit, but Daniel Willemsen rolled off Leverton. <laughs> so, so impressed with the 10-time world champion out in front doing an absolutely sublime job, but Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssen is now dropping behind Marvin van Lukena and Robbie Bax. Not sure what's happening there with Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssen, yeah. but they are there in fifth place just ahead of Kuban and Reitman. Something's gone wrong. Something's gone wrong with them. That's so unusual to see them fall back like that. Whether the passenger's taken or not, maybe Kuhn has done something himself, but van Lukena is now fast and is in pursuit of Bax. Bax trying to get back over the wheel to get the drive up that hill, get as much poke as he can into that big fat tire. He's going for that inside line again. No, he's following all the way round now. That does not work. He's probably riding defensively now because he's got Van Lukena on his exhaust pipe. Absolutely, but uh, out of the top three, covered by five points, may I remind you, those three guys. But uh, Etienne Bax, he has to get in front. He is the third of those three, but he's looking towards the inside of Julian Feldman and Andre Chermak. But uh, I'll tell you what, superior drive out of that right-hander for Julian Feldman and Andre Chermak. You can hear the air horns blowing in delight that Andre Chermak is there in second place. If we had a Live table, Veldman is in the championship lead at the moment in the position he's in. If we had a live table, <laughs> you, you, and we haven't. You couldn't write the script for this one, could you? <laughs> this is fantastic. Etienne Baxen needs to get past Julian Veldman. Marvin van Lukener certainly needs to get. Van Lukener came here leading on 175 points with Veldman on 171. At the moment, Veldman's doing enough to take the championship lead. Bax is on 170, just one point behind Veldman. So he knows full well the significance of this. We move on for three races in the Netherlands in the deep sand of Os. You'll be there, Bradley, looking after the job. And it couldn't be in better hands, I tell you. Look at Willemsen, though. I, my hat's off to him. I cannot, cannot overstate my respect for the way he's running in this one. I mean, you can have all the experience all the world. Those 10 world titles dating back to 1999, but we can't ignore the fact that, you know, I think it's fair to say he's getting on in his 80s, in his mid-40s now, whereas these guys, Julian Veldman, 22, he's less than half his age. Yeah, incredible. Bax showing a front wheel to us. There he comes, out of there, Julian Veldman now just about midway between and ahead of him Daniel Willemsen which line is Veldman going to go he's going for the tight one no he's not swings it wide Bax is going for the tight one looking through on the inside to see if he can get the power down and that was a brave effort it pulled him onto the back and almost onto the inside for the left hander he's going for the inside there as well and he's alongside but it's Veldman by a gnat's whisker as they go over the top this is oh, I'm going to take a risk <laughs> you're getting a bit excited there Barry <laughs> I don't blame you, this is absolutely justified. I mean, Daniel Willemsen, 10 times a world champion. Julian Velvin never won a world championship before. Etienne Bax, a three-time world champion, and they're all there fighting for the lead. They're side by side, Etienne Bax gets the front wheel right up in the air. But uh, Julian Velman doing a fantastic job of defending that second place. And as you say, Marvin van Luken are in fourth place. He will be forced to uh, give up with that red plate and give it to Julian Velman well, going into the final round. When we come round next time, we'll have a look. There's a dirty big rock in the middle of that climb up towards the left-hander. If any of them hits that, that could be pretty tricky. It's a great big stone that's unearthed itself and is in the middle of the start-finish straight just after the left-hander. Lucas Czerny, Bastian Chopin on the Java, looking fantastic as well. They had a great result. I thought they were mixed up in the melee in race two. Not so. Willemsen, Rodolf Le Breton, overcomes the frog, then comes Bax, then it's Van Lukener. So the top three in the championship are second, third and fourth. 
with the old warhorse out in front, throwing a spanner in the works. Was that a slight mistake from Baxter? It looks like Marvin Van Luken and Robbie Baxter all over the rear wheel once again. They're side by side as they head towards this left-hand hairpin, but Edgy and Bax has the inside line. Can Van Luken carry more corner speed and get the drive on the exit? We'll have to wait and see, but that was a very small mistake from Edgy and Bax. It was, he went to the loose stuff. He got the back wheel in the loose and he lost the drive. That is like talcum powder. When it gets thrown to the side, you just lose the drive, it can suck you in, and it's a jolly good. He was very, very lucky. Hermans and Janssen still going, but Lucas Cherny and Bastien Chopin now closing them down. I don't know what Hermans' problem is, but he's obviously not running at the pace he was. Uh, I'm going to use the phrase again, it's damaged reputation, I think, because Lucas Cherny is on his case. He certainly is. Uh, well, Lucas Cherny, Bastien Chopin, of course, Lucas Cherny, local rider here on the 25 outfit, chasing hard after the number three, who of course finished third in the world in 2019, Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssens. They finished second in 2018, third in 2019, and it looks as now they're coming to this weekend as sixth in the championship. They are in fifth place going into this race, however. Amazing, amazing from Villanson. 1.7 the gap back to Veldman, then it's another couple of seconds to Bax, narrowly ahead of Van Lukener. This is the battle still for the lead. Bax then has managed to extricate himself from the clutches of Marvin Van Lukener and is sitting there in front. Van Lukener, when he looks ahead of him, he can see his title lead evaporate. That's really what it comes down to. And I'm not sure if he'll be third, but he stands a good chance of being third at the end of this. The gap at the front has closed down. Willemsen, Veldman, who is it going to be? Willemsen is out in front at the moment. Ronald Leverett on the French passenger, doing everything he can to throw that machine around this circuit. Oh, 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 that was so close. Slams the door in the face of Julian Veldman and Andre Chermak. We are going to see Veldman take a move, I'm sure. This is where he's strong, around this back part of the circuit, over the big jump and down away to the left-hander. Veldman then, Veldman, Chermak, on the back of Willemsen and Vinner. Oh, he put his cycle <laughs> in the deep <laughs> stuff as well. The chair wheel went over the berm. That cost Veldman time. Willemsen was better out of that left-hander. Now, right, tight, or left, wide. This is the biggest gap we have seen, and it's 1.7 seconds, Barry. This is absolutely incredible stuff in the final race of this Kremlin GP. Whatever Willemsen said to Rodolf Le Breton, the conversation they had has worked wonders. They are both inspired, riding like men possessed. Bax in third, Veldman and Chermak in second place. And here we go again. I think Julian Veldman will eventually wear down Daniel Willemsen. Daniel Willemsen getting the plaudits from the crowd. Over they go. Chermak getting urged on by the Czech supporters leaning over the rail. There's a there's that big rock, there's that big rock, just there. Hey, uh, say we want to avoid that one at all costs, but uh, Willemsen, Veltman, Bax, Van Luken are covered by 5.8 seconds. Bax is 2.7 behind the 1-1-1 one, one, one of uh, Willemsen and Leverton, but <laughs> you really cannot call this. We're already halfway through the race almost. This will give Julian Veltman the championship lead if things stay the way they are but we still have a long way to go, 16 minutes. We're halfway on the clock, almost. 16 minutes plus two laps. Julian Melman on the inside. No, he's going to have a go. He's all in a difficult, difficult position there. He was throwing everything in there. He's throwing into he's the, in the deep stuff. What do you do? Well, he's <laughs> having a go. He's anywhere. He's everywhere. He's all over him. And <laughs> it's just incredible. Willemsen and Julian Veldman. Veldman was throwing caution to the wind. He's going left, he's going right, he'd go over the top if he could. <laughs> he just wanted to get past it, he's back in the loose stuff again. Now he's got some drive, he's got some drive on the hard, he crossed over onto the hard pack stuff and he got some drive. That move of his has dropped them away now from Etienne Bax, he's on the inside, Julian Veldman. Bax closing up, going into that bend, he always does. He's waiting and watching like a Labrador to pick up all the crumbs that fall off the table, I'm telling you, because <laughs> they are going to fall over chunks of meat, actually. My Labrador wasn't what, too keen on bread. What a fantastic <laughs> analogy that is. <laughs> oh, we've got a traffic just moving out of the way. Thank you very much to the number 88 crew there, because we have got a fantastic race on our hands. 15 minutes remain, plus the two laps, and there is still a three-way battle for the win. Here they go. Veldman in second. Daniel Willemsen, my hero, I have to say, after this race. He's, I've had mixed emotions over Daniel Willemsen over the seasons, but you cannot take away from the man 
his experience. He told us you take 15 or 18 years to win 10 titles. That's what I did. And it's not just about riding, but I can tell you what he's showing us right now. He's every bit as good as he's ever been. He certainly is. I mean, <laughs> it's so fantastic to see the old war horse out in front, showing the young guns how it's done. It is the master and the apprentices chasing hard, but Union Feldman and Andre Chermak, this is where they're strong. They're going to the outside. Union Feldman takes the lead. Daniel Willemsen is forced to submit, finally, half race distance, but Union Velvet and Andre Chermak take the lead, and that will cement them at the front of this championship if it stays like this. That was amazing. I said that's where it would happen. He's brave down there. That's not to say Daniel Willemsen isn't, but has that move on Willemsen somewhat demoralized him? He now knows that he could be passed. If you have this invincibility in your head that nobody can get past me, it's amazing how far you could go with it. And Willemsen has gone half race distance and he hasn't given up. He's still there. He's still there within fighting distance. Union Velvet and Andre Chermak then. A second race leader of the race at half race distance. Daniel Willemsen, Rodolf Leverton go to the inside. They're not close enough. They're defending hard against Etienne Bax and Nicholas Mousset. But look at this getting wheeled on by the crowd. Union Velvet and Andre Chermak. And Bax is through. Bax is through to second place. Etienne Bax and Nicolas Mousset in pursuit of the frog. Feldman and Andre Chermak lead. Etienne Bax, double race winner, is right with them. Who's that, Taylor? He's out of the way. That's OK. They're really going now. That's two of them past Willemsen. Where is Van Lukener? Van Lukener, Willemsen still in third. Van Lukener in fourth. And his championship lead has gone. This battle now. And the crowd going absolutely bonkers here for Andre Chermak. They Why absolutely are. Andre Chermak is a home hero. We heard it in Yenin for the first round. Here we are in third round in Kremlin. What has happened here? Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssen telling them to move out of the way. Was that to the other riders or is that to Kuhn? I'm not quite sure. But uh, definitely Glenn Janssen's not a happy bunny. But I tell you what, the crowd are going absolutely out of their minds watching Andre Chermak and Julian Veldman lead this race. Kurt Varick and Larry Kunas have come up past Lucas Cherney. So they've moved up to get past the Czech Java rider. Race leaders, Chermak and Chermak in the Zerka car and Feldman <laughs> on the handlebars. I doubt if they could swap over, not half race distance. He can do anything else though. Look at that. Etienne Bax, now the bump's kicking the side car up as they go into those bends. Bax on that, I cannot believe that that uh, Feldman tried that move in that deep stuff. I cannot believe it. <laughs> Me either. I think he was getting a little bit impatient because he knew that uh, the Etienne Bax and Nicholas Mousset were right there. So the championship, five points is the gap between the top three coming into this race, and it will close up again, I'm sure. We'll have to do some quick maths in the meantime. Etienne Bax then still looking at a race victory here if he can only find his way past Julian Feldman and Andre Chermak. That is not going to be an easy task. Still, it's Daniel Willemsen, still in third. Willemsen and Rodolphe Le Breton, what an amazing race they've had. If Willemsen can bring it home to a podium, he will be ecstatic, I tell you. Feldman, Chermak. Bradley's scribbling away here doing some sums or he's writing down so we know what's going on. I have it I have it here that if it remains like this with Van Lucan in fourth place, Union Veldman and Andre Chermak will lead the championship by three points over Van Lucan and Bax with a further one point behind will be Bax and Mousset. The championship battle will go down to four points with three riders all in the mix. Fantastic. It doesn't get much <laughs> better than that, does it? That big rock still looking ominous halfway up the start finish straight there. Another rip off from Bax. I saw that go. Left hand off and just taking the tear off away. Feldman and Chermak are leading. They've opened up a slight gap now. That looks like something like a couple of seconds. And now we can see Van Luke, another red plate in fourth. He'll be the next man. Willemsen, a quick look over his shoulder to see where he's coming. He'll be judging them each time on that right-hand loop to see where they are. He will know exactly where they are. Of course he will, yeah. So he's got very, very experienced. The most experienced man in the field and the most successful sidecar cross rider of all the time. It's right there in third place. Marvin Van Lukener and Robbie Bax, 2018 world champion, is Marvin Van Lukener. And I'll tell you what, that red plate on the number two, could that be going towards Veldman for the final round? one week's time. That would be amazing. That would be the first time that he's taken the red plate to my memory. I uh, might be somebody out there. If I'm wrong, feel free to write into the website and tell me. But I don't think Julian Feldman has carried the red plate uh, in my time. That's for sure. So Van Lukener and Robbie Baxen in fourth place at the moment. And they're having a really, really good ride. My heart is pounding in here, but I bet it's not pounding as much as the heart of those passengers. They'll all be pumping with adrenaline. 
rushing around their bodies, fueling them on. We are now into the last 10 minutes before the two lap board comes out, and we have this couple in third place and looking just as strong. They've settled for six before, they might just settle for a podium here. That'll be fantastic to see Daniel Willemsen and Rodolf Leverton. I mean, 20 years ago we were seeing Daniel Willemsen battling for race wins and titles, and here we are, 2021, and he's still there on the podium positions. It's fantastic to see the longevity of that man's career. In a sport like this, where it's so ultra-physical, Experience counts for so much, yes, investment counts for a lot as well, as he told us just the other evening. But physical fitness, you need to be in such good shape, and that goes without saying. Kurt Varick, Larry Kunas, they're fighting their way through. Let's have a look where they are. They're up to six again. They're up to six behind Hermann. So Hermans and Janssens have managed to stay ahead of the flying Varick, the Estonian Finnish pairing. Larry Kunas, a very accomplished passenger, of course. Let's, let's not forget as well, in the championship, fourth place, Kurt Varick into this round, 1-3-5. Of course. Kuhn Hermans has 1-2-7, so there's a deficit there of eight points. And at the moment, Hermans and Janssens is ahead of Varick and Kunas. But there's a challenge for third place. Marvin Van Lucken and Robbie Bax go to the inside. Daniel Willemsen and Rodolf Leverton, can they come back? It doesn't look as though a hand up there from Robbie Bax, but to Marvin Van Lucken and Robbie Bax then up one more position into third place. Oh, that's a shame. And Willemsen with his hand off the handlebar, looking as though he might have a problem again here. Eight minutes left on the clock. Is Daniel Willemsen going to be able to maintain the pace? He's dropped back hugely. He's dropped back a long way and he's almost into the clutches of Varick. Willemsen, oh, Hermans rather. Hermans now the next up. But Daniel Willemsen waved a hand almost despairingly as if he had a problem which he couldn't resolve. Let's have a look. Nothing wrong, apparently, with the machine. That all looks good. I think a certain amount of frustration that he's falling backwards. It, OK, here we are. If Velben wins, Bax is second, and Van Lukena is third, Julian Velben and Andre Chermak will lead the championship by one point. You are joking. One point, 196, 195, and then Bax, three points behind Van Lukena on 192. Fantastic. Goodness me. You could not ask for better, could you, in the sunshine here at Kremlin? As Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssens do what they've done in the previous races, appear to get second wind and start to pull the pin. We saw a hand gesture from Glenn Janssens. They can see Willemsen now has become a bit of a target later in the race, and there's no shame in that, I can assure you, because they've, ri they've ridden so strongly. I am hugely, hugely impressed. <laughs> this has been one of the best races we've seen all year. In fact, this is the best race we've seen all year. Such experience and so many world titles going head to head as Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssens look to the inside. Daniel Willemsen and Rodolf Leverton. Here comes Ferry. Varric and Kunas on the way as well, almost side by side between the triple one and the number three. But at the moment, in fourth place, it is still Daniel Willemsen and Rodolf Leverton. Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssens, can they get the drive? They're almost side by side down this bottom end of the circuit. This is where Hermans will possibly a look over the shoulder again from Daniel Willemsen. So he knows that he's got more traffic coming and more bother up his tail. And it's Hermans, Hermans and Janssens on the outside of the 10 times champion. And Hermans is neatly placed now for the right hander. Can he get himself into that position? He's got to go tight, but defensive riding by Willemsen there. Close the door. No way through for Hermans. Willemsen now at the left. Round they go, and now climbing up onto this start-finish straight. No, before the, this is the hill before. Two very similar left-handers. Willemsen at the head of the pack there. Varick coming. Hermans and Janssens. Someone cruising. Yellow flag. Yellow flag's being shown. That's number 88 of, uh, oh, it's just Zyslavski and Hanalik. So uh, traffic again getting out of the way. Thank you very much to the number 88 crew. Adrian Petter, number 24. And Miroslav Zatlukel, the next crew to be relegated by the lapping brigade. And here they come. Willemsen and Rodolf Le Breton over past Adrian Petter. Down they go. Down to the left-hander. Throwing it round. Kurt Varick has gone past Hermans. Hermans 
and Janssen slowing there. What happened there? It looked like they had a small mistake there. I'm not quite sure what happened between Kuhn Hermans and Glenn Janssen, but certainly they've lost a lot of time on Kurt Varick and Larry Kunas, Daniel Willemsen and Rodolf Leverton as well. Varick now on a charge. He's quite rightly said fourth in the championship coming into this race, so he's got everything to fight for, and he's just gone past Kuhn Hermans that he was close to, three points apart, and he's gone past. They're side Kuhnham. by side through the chicane part of the circuit, but Daniel Willemsen and Rodolf Leverton are still there. Oh. Now they go to the inside. Varick through. <laughs> Varick through on Willemsen, moving up yet another place. Willemsen going backwards. Here comes Hermans. Here comes Hermans. It's not going to be sixth place this time for Willemsen. Again, more gesticulation from Daniel Willemsen. They are in fifth place at the moment because Varick has gone past. Our captions not keeping up with the action here, so it's so fast. Updated every time they go over the line for sure. Hermans and Janssens. Four minutes left on the clock. Where has that half hour gone? <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but uh, wow, what a fantastic way to spend half an hour watching these absolute titans go head to head here in Kremlin. Well, if you want to watch this for yourself next year, I'm sure, I don't know if we're coming here next year or not, but I'm sure we will have a check round. Of course, you can visit Czech Republic, and this is what you are greeted with. There is Julian Velben and Andre Chermak just in the background. You saw with the uh, the white jerseys and the black and yellow helmets. That is Etienne Bax and Nicholas Mousset. 3.9 seconds is the gap between the number 31 and the number 82. Van Lukener, Varig, Willemsen, Hermans. That is the top six. Race leaders, Velben and Chermak coming up. Uh, behind tailenders again. This is this puts a smile on my face. Coming up here, Gordiev. Yeah, Gordiev is there. The one five one. Get Gordiev points for uh, Julian Velman and Andre Chermak to go to the inside, so as to not hamper their lead. And well, good stuff there from the Estonian and the Latvian. That'll be Kasper Stupin is keeping his eye open for Gordiev, saying they've got we've got traffic coming through. We do have the black flag, the blue flag system here, of course, and. Uh, Julian Veldman will be making the most of that when he gets among the tail enders. There, the blue flag on cue. This, work, this time for uh, Jan and Pavel Bukal, the number 26 crew, local riders. And uh, there, Julian Veldman and Andre Chermak go around the outside. But I'll tell you what, that three second gap between 31 and 82, that has opened up substantially on this lap. It certainly has. The tail enders then. Julian Veldman has thrown the tail enders to Etienne Bax. It could well be a runner up spot. We've got just over two minutes before we see the two lap boards. So we're going to be seeing something like three more laps, possibly even four for these crews. They are lapping in such quick time, but what a race we've had. Absolutely breathtaking. The one, two, three going through. Stacey and Alex van der Velt. Twin brothers, identical twin brothers indeed. The Bucals, 26, go through. They're ahead of Etienne Bax and Nicola Mousset, who just skirt that huge rock in the middle of the start finish straight. Everybody will know that's there. That will loom like a ship in the middle of the ocean as you come up to it. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So it's a good job Etienne Bax and Nicholas Mousset are avoiding that one, but there's a lot of these big rocks being unearthed here as the race goes on. Just one and a half minutes remain, plus the two laps at the end. <laughs> Wow, what a fantastic race we have had. It's been a ride from start to finish. Jan and Pavel Bukel, green shirted. Etienne Bax, Nicolas Musset on the outside. They're still quick down there. They're not hanging around. Gordiev and Kasper Stupolis, the 151 crew, they're third in your picture. We're looking now at the third place position of Bax. Second place position of Bax, third in of Van Lukener. I'm watching the captions roll through and I, I can't read them to save my life. Moving over then, respectfully, Bax and Mousset go through in second place. Race leader Veldman with just under a minute now before the flag comes out for two laps. And Bax and Mousset in the sunshine here, the lengthening shadows. The telegraph pole looks about 50 meters long in the shade. Go down into the darkness out of the sun. Bradley, what can I say? This has been a mega, mega display. It absolutely has. And uh, well, we've had Daniel Willemsen, the 10-time world champion, leading the way. Julian Feldman, the young pretender, coming through strong. Kuhn Hermans, he faded, unfortunately, during the race. But uh, Etienne Bax and Nicolas Mousset still there, plucking away there in second place. It's good, solid points, 22 points if they remain in that position. But Marvin van Lukener and Robbie Bax, this will be their worst finish, and it will be a fourth place. Earlier on, third place now 
Yeah, but, uh, third place, you're the same as me. We're getting confused. We're getting confused. But <laughs> let's see them go through. Back to Musset in second place then. The gap, 7.1 seconds last time over the line. 7.1 seconds. Van Lukener then, 13 seconds off Julian Veldman's time. So, Julian Veldman, Julian Veldman has really come good here. There's the third place crew. Van Lukener and Bax, Varek and Kunas, nine seconds behind them. Then Willemsen still in fifth, holding his own against Kuhn Hermans and looking as though he's going to maintain that advantage. If he brings it home in fifth, that is a, a weekend best for Daniel Willemsen. Absolutely, and uh, I don't know if he'll be happy with that or not, but still a top five finish in this kind of company. Daniel Willemsen and Rodolf Lebreton, they'll have to go away. They'll take the bad and they'll accept the good. They certainly will. I think it will be a good, good, consistent weekend for them. Jan and Pavel Bukel then just being passed by Van Lukener and Robbie Bax. I know what these guys are feeling. They'll be thinking, thank goodness for that. Two more laps. I've done half an hour. I can do two laps. The track here at Kremlin has remained in magnificent condition. All of the crews say they enjoy it, particularly when it's hard pack and they're looking so, so good. Van Lukener though and Robbie Bax are going to relinquish that red plate that is for sure it certainly looks that way and uh, they've <laughs> well if you said to me at the end at the beginning of this if um, van lucan and Bax are going to have to give up their red plate i wouldn't have believed you because they've proved so dominant so far this season but union feldman and andre chermak they've been plucking away they really do seem to be the underdogs as we go on to two laps remaining two laps to go then for Velman and chermak all they've got to do is hold it together because the gap we're waiting now for Bax and Mousset to go over the line. Ten seconds. Veldman has turned the wick up. No doubt about it. They're on a mission here. They know they've got this. Whoa, oh, oh so dear me. He had a quick <laughs> look to see if he was still yeah. there. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, my word. Oh, my <laughs> chair back. <laughs> my was in my mouth then when I see oh, that. Dear, oh, dear. Fantastic stuff. They need to keep it on the circuit. Come on, Julian. What? You've got one and a half laps left. Keep it going. What, what I love about you, Bradley, is you're new to this sport, but you are already dyed in the wool. Sidecar cross commentator and a sidecar cross fan. You're feeling the action. You're feeling the movement. You're, you're riding with them, and that's what it takes. If this doesn't excite you, I'm sorry. You've got no emotion. This is fantastic, and this is one of the best sports in the world. And <laughs> what a fantastic display we've had put on here for ourselves to bear witness to this weekend. Absolutely brilliant. That bike looks longer, doesn't it? We've said about extended wheelbase. It looks longer to suit his long frame. And it's been specially built, the CPD. Hopefully there'll be some production CBD chassis on the market and in the field of sidecar motocross. And if they could build a bespoke one for Julian Veldman, why can't they build a bespoke one for anybody? Uh, you're absolutely right. So, yeah, Julian Veldman, as you say, the frog stands nearly two metres tall as Julian Veldman, just 22 years of age. Andre Chermak and, uh, well, very experienced Andre oh. Chermak. <laughs> He's showboating. He's showboating. Oh, you cannot do that, can you? No, no, you've got a race to win. We still have one lap left after this one, Julian. Keep it on the track, keep it going. Goodness me. His grin always extends from ear to ear. He's got one lap to go now. Let's watch this. Veldman and Chermak. Chermak on home soil. The Czech crowd will go absolutely bonkers if they win this. They will. I can't wait to see it. It's just one more circulation then for Julian Veldman and Andre Chermak. Backs in Moussa, now 10.7 seconds of drift. This is Julian Veldman and Andre Chermak's race to lose. Keep it on your wheels, boys. Don't do the same as what you did last time around. Into the fourth turn then, that difficult right-hand hairpin before that perilous plunge down into that fast left-hander. You've got the support of everyone around the circuit. Julian Veldman, Andre Chermak, down they go. Down this long, long, breathtaking drop. Take it easy, you've got a massive lead. It's 10 seconds. Don't overcook it. What can I say? It's been terrific, hasn't it? <laughs> it really has. This is one of the best races I've seen in my life. Veldman and Chermak on their final lap here in Kremlin at what has been the most incredible third Grand Prix of the 2021 season, the penultimate Grand Prix. I can't get my words out. I'm so smitten with emotion for this. This is really fantastic stuff. He has kept trying all the way around. Once past Willemsen, 
it was game on for this young lad and they are doing well a wonderful pairing not far to go now a couple of three bends a few jumps that's all it takes you're home and dry Julian do not throw it away Andre Mega knows it Andre, Andre knows it. it we've got this just <laughs> one more corner to go <laughs> You think it's the same one? It's, We're losing our minds. It's so <laughs> easy. Andre showboating. Don't get carried away, boys and girls. Keep it together. Over this hill you go, and then the left hander, the climb up to the start finish. They know Andre Chomak has got his fist in the air. He's showboating round here. Here they go, That's heading it. for the flag. Victory for Feldman and Chomak. Magnificent stuff. Well done, boys. Well done. Etienne Bax and Nicola Mousset. Second place, grinning from ear to ear. And Yeva, don't say, how does it feel? You must know how it feels. Oh, dear, oh, dear, 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 dear. Dear. My word, what a fantastic race. Oh, 11.3 11 11 seconds was the gap between Veldman, Chema, Bax and Mousse. Van Lukener and Bax in third place. But <laughs> what can you say? That's right. good enough. Word. Job done for Etienne Bax and Nicolas Mousset, but the championship lead. Willemsen, fifth. You'll take that, buddy, won't you? I'm sure you will. Daniel Willemsen and Rodolphe Le Breton. Oh, dear me. Marvin Van oh. Lukener, Robbie Bax. Third place, that's your 3 2 1. Van Lukener, Bax, Velman in reverse order. Hermans, sixth. And uh, Jan Pavel Bukel, lap riders coming over. Kuhn Hermans, 52 seconds off the pace of Julian Veldman. That is staggering. All was not well. Lucas Cherney coming over. Now, that'll be a strong finish for Lucas Cherney. It is. It's seventh place. That is good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Etienne Bax thrilled with that look at Veldman. Veldman's grin literally stretches from ear to ear. His ears might disappear. He is so so excited well according to my calculations here barry uh marvin van luke and a robbie backs 175 add where did they finish third 20 points 175 at 20 is 195 veldman 171 plus the 25 points for the win 196 etienne backs 170 at the second place of 22 192 so what we've got we have got julian veldman leading the championship by one point over marvin van lukener and robbie backs marvin van lukener and robbie backs a further three points ahead of etienne backs and nicholas Mousse. so into the final round four three crews four points that is phenomenal and totally different conditions of course deep sand of os uh, you'll be there to witness and describe all of the action for us, Bradley. Os in the Netherlands, Julian Veldman, home GP. Could you imagine the scenes that we would see? <laughs> Goodness me. My Goodness word, me. But... Well, we've said how much he smiles and how happy he is. I think Jever's down there with Julian Veldman. Well done, young man. Probably had a, a moment's difficulty catching up with him because of all the adoring fans. That is, well, it's either that or it's the it's the, uh, the jaw muscles have locked into a smile and he just can't move. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go then. So a few technical initials, but we can go down there now to Julian Veldman. Julian, I almost feel like I have to stand on my tippy toes or you have to come a little down, but congratulations. Thank you, thank you. What a race. Everyone was screaming, everyone was shouting. Could you hear that? Yeah, and the, the last few laps I see all the people because the, the gap from each end get bigger and bigger. And uh, well, I could slow down a little bit and see all the people. It was crazy, crazy. And yeah, you've taken the red plate. Do you realize that? Can you just realize that that you you did it no still not still not well i was uh, the whole race behind willemsen and uh well i needed to find some good places to pass him and uh well with the two step downs i just had full throttle i did it close to throttle and i i i, uh, I nearly jump over him it looked like i jumped over him so fast and uh well and then i could uh, make a gap and uh well 
<laughs> well, yeah, that's what we did. Would Andre be scared to get in a sidecar with you next weekend after all this race? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but he did also a good job because the sidecar fender was completely broken, everything was broken. Well, I don't know how he did, but uh, well, he, he, he was still on, so <laughs> I'm very happy. Yeah, I'll let you back to your team once again. Congratulations. Thank Fantastic you. performance you. from you and Andre, and enjoy. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Well done, Yeva. That was brilliant. And he. He was so so excitable and so excited and quite rightly so. Did you hear how he got ahead of Willem said he didn't close the throttle down those steep jumps? <laughs> there you go. I told you that he's brave down there. Well, he's we, good down there. We was on about the anatomy earlier and uh, well, the appendages on uh, Julian Feldman are certainly larger than most. <laughs> I think it's safe to say after that admission. <laughs> and Andres have disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. The crowd absolutely loved that. They went mad and we had such a big bunch of spectators here. That's the, the whole point. And uh, I just want to hear what Etienne's got to say because he must be so pleased. He was looking pleased. He's really closed up. He knows that he can go down there and uh, we can hear from Bax right now. My wish has come true. So I got Etienne Bax here with me. Etienne, how are you feeling? Second place finish in the race three. It almost was the perfect weekend for you. Yeah, almost was. You know, we were really fighting uh, to have the perfect weekend, but you know, what a race was this, you know. It was, I think for the spectators, it must be an exciting race because in, uh, ex uh, in the first two, three, four laps, it was, was crazy, you know, at least for the riders. I don't know uh, how it was on the side, but uh, you know, it was an exciting weekend and what a race will be us, you know. Yeah, we w walked into this race with only five point difference between all top three teams and you closed the gap. So what's the plan for the us now? Yeah, you know, we just we, we, the same plan like always, you know, we just want to win. Uh, but, uh, you know, for the championship, you know, I think everybody will go to us now because this will be an exciting weekend. Yeah, well, well, thank you. Enjoy your... Good weekend here in Kremlin. I'll see you next week. Thanks for all the supporters back in Bergijk. See you. Oh, well done, Etienne. Well done, Yeva. Yeah, he's excited. That's all but absolutely cracking. Sad to see the red plate will go from Marvin van Lukener. But what a race. Etienne back said that it was exciting. It was crazy. All the riders enjoyed it. Did we on the side enjoy it? Oh, did we? It was absolutely breathtaking. The first half of the race was non-stop, handlebar to handlebar, but Van Lukener and Bax have surrendered that red plate. Etienne Bax, the elder of the two brothers, and Nicolas Mousset could not quite make it a perfect weekend, but nonetheless, they chased this man hard. Julian Veldman and Andre Chermak, once they got past, in his own words, Willemsen, I tried every which way to get by. Once I got past, then I knew I had to go. I opened up a lead, and that's all it took. Getting past Willemsen was no easy task. The 1-1-1 rider was absolutely brilliant. But the man who now surrenders the red plate and must be a little bit reflective on here in Kremlin is Marvin van Lukener, and Jeva is with him. So I am here with Marvin. Marvin, tough weekend for you and the team. How are you feeling? Yeah, not so good. We lose the red plate, but... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I struggled the whole weekend with a lot of arm pumps, so that's not so easy on a, on yeah on this fast track. But we do what uh, yeah what we can, and uh, yeah we are still happy that we still on the on the box. But uh, we have next week a new chance. Well, there's only one point difference between you and Julian. So what's the plan? What's the goal for the next week? Yeah, we prepared very well this week. Uh, I think uh, I take uh, some rest, and then we are ready for next week for the battle. And how important it will be to go out and finish every race consistently in top position pretty much to hold the red plate and win the championship overall. Yeah, that's always important. Uh, no injuries and uh, no DNF is uh, most important uh, in the world championship. So we will see what uh, next week uh, will bring, but uh, we are ready for the battle. All right, I'll go. let you go and rest up and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Well done, Marvin. Go home, regroup. You're good in the sand, we all know that. And that's it then. Etienne Bax was the biggest points earner here. Julian Veldman. Kuhn Hermans comes away with a third place finish ahead of Marvin van Lukener and Robbie Bax. Yeah, interesting. So in the overall, he'll be up there on the podium, third overall.
He will, he will. Kurt Varick and Larry Kunas round out the top five. Daniel Willemson and Rodolf Lebreton, fantastic stuff. Two sixth place finishes and a fifth place in Fair the final play. race. Kuban and Reitman, Lucas Journey, Bassi and Chopin, two seventh place finishes today. Peter and Jano Stegman's fantastic stuff Absolutely. from the father and son duo. They'll be delighted with that, of course. Uh, Peter, the father of Jano, that was their final GP together. Top 10 overall. Their only GP together. Top Amazing. 10 overall ahead of Gert Gordiev and Kasper Stupolis. Amazing. Well done. Further down the order, Sanders Rostang, uh, Heinz Schelbert, and the rest of those guys. Bukal finished more respectably. I'm glad about that. Another stronger finish from him. Tim Levering, somewhat disappointed. That upset in race two slowed his momentum down a bit, but he might be strong when you get to us for sure. Next weekend, it's home conditions for him. What a Grand Prix we've had here in Kremlin in the Czech Republic. It has been nothing short of amazing. Jake Brown and Joe Millard with five points only coming in the first race. They've really not had any luck at all this year. Van der Velt, Petsch, Van der Schralen and Zizlavski rounds out the top 25 in the overall classification. We're going to take a short break. We'll be looking at the prize giving later on, but from, from Barry and Bradley, we'll join you shortly. Enjoy. is 10 times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Luken has certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable. <laughs> 